Welcome to Building MV Sago. It's nice to see everyone here again today. If you're new here, my name is Rick, and with my wife Lori, we've been building a 31 foot diesel power trawler in our backyard. If you're building a boat or dreaming of building a boat, you might want to follow us along on our epic journey. We're certainly glad to have you. There's a couple of tasks ahead of us today, and the first one is drilling some ventilation holes in the hatch covers that will go on the bunks in the V-berth area. I wasn't sure exactly how many holes I would need, what size they would be, how far apart they would be. I decided uh, on a 3x3 three three grid and I skipped every other hole and the holes are 2 inches in diameter. Here I'm putting a radius on each of the holes just to ease the edges and make it a little easier for the paint to stick. This isn't the first time I've mixed epoxy this season but uh, we need a little thickened epoxy to glue uh, a splice panel into the starboard side bunk. I've added a little uh, more wood flour and now some cabasil just to thicken up the mix a bit. That looks just about right. This is the splice panel I was telling you about. Uh, it's required because of the modifications we made to the bulkhead that separates the V-berth from the rest of the forward cabin. If you've ever built a boat or considering one, uh, you realize that building your own boat is a lot of modifications and design changes, etc. And it all means a lot of extra work and you will go through this over and over and over again. This is the next morning and the epoxy is cured, luckily, given the temperatures. And it's time to flip it over and we're going to put a little filler on here and then we're going to tape it. Just a little bit of gratuitous sanding, just for filler. I just know you wanted to see more sanding. What I'm using here is about a 4 ounce plain weave tape. It's not really structural, it's more there just to hold the thing together. There's no need for extreme accuracy here. Uh, this is not a cosmetic part and a good portion of it will be sanded away or fared out. Mm -hmm. 
working wet on wet is generally considered the far superior way to uh, laminate or tape joints to ensure a chemical bond. Even though the epoxy was warmed up in the little hot box project that I did earlier, it still had the consistency of honey and it was a little hard to wet out the tape. You can see I'm struggling a little bit to get it fully wetted out, but it just takes time and we'll have to work at it. And uh, I've had to speed up these sequences because they're extremely slow, monotonous, boring, and repetitive. This is the next day after the epoxy on the other side had cured, so we flipped it over, and again, it's another monotonous, repetitive task. I forgot to film it, but this is how I accelerate the curing of the epoxy in low temperatures. I've added a little bit of uh, wood flour to the seam just because there's some small little imperfections that needed to be filled. It's a little bit warmer in the boat shed today and the epoxy is a little more easy to work with so I've got to move right along here. I'm using peel ply here to make it a little easier to fair out the joints and hopefully a little less sandy. On uh, what is essentially a butt joint here, there's no need to use a consolidator or a fin roller or anything like that. The uh, squeegee does a really good job of forcing the epoxy into the tape. Well, here I'm beginning to assemble uh, an insulated box 
and I'm going to force heat into it and hopefully this will accelerate the cure of the epoxy. Now here's where my plan goes a little haywire and it ends up being funny as frick so you want to watch this one. Oh, for f eggs. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Here I'm using some short drywall nails just to pin the whole thing together. In comes the little buddy heater. This is going to be the source of heat which will raise the internal temperature of this box to about 50 degrees Celsius. It only took an hour and the epoxy was cured dry to the touch. Six degrees. Celsius. That's it for this week, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you stuck with us. We're glad to have you. Come back next week. See ya.